main chapters. You could see them on the screen. One is customer excellence. Uh, one is delivery uh, insight and enablement. Uh, just to give a brief customer excellence, the team members primarily interfere with business stakeholders uh, with the aim of uh, driving an outstanding customer experience. The delivery chapter, basically the customer excellence team hands over the requirements uh, to the delivery team uh, who then go out to the uh, market and fulfill business needs. So this is where the actual sourcing happens, right? Patrick, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, third, third chapter is uh, insights and enablement. Uh, so this uh, team is in charge of delivering category insights uh, and solutions. In fact, there's another team called resource and performance management. It's not mentioned here. It's, it's kind of a horiz horizontal uh, function. So this team's job is to ensure uh, that the three chapters adhere to the given strategy and measure them against a set of KPIs. So uh, this team also ensures that they match the needs and capacity through portfolio management uh, and resource management, which will come to uh, you know, the next slide. So so Patrick, why these three chapters are important and how can it enhance a stakeholder satisfaction? Yeah, great question. So I think a couple of additional pieces of context, which is which is very important. Um, so, so we've we've I think gone through our transformation in two major phases. Phase one was a, a heavy restructuring of the organization, so bringing five or six individual procurement teams together, and we've created within two years um, a very traditional procurement organization, category management led, sort of operations and transactional procurement going across, um, presence uh, in, in multiple locations aligned to our stakeholder footprint and sort of the, the traditional procurement model. Um, two years in, uh, we've realized to meet some of the other objectives, personally our own, and the second, the business one, we need to evolve, we need to move on from there. If we keep on working in the way what we just set up literally and how many other functions uh, across other companies are set up, we're not going to meet the expectations of the business doing other stuff yeah, um, and delivering value far beyond savings. And also we're not going to meet our own expectation to basically survive as a function longer term, I think, and also to move on into what everything else procurement can do. And then we started our evolution journey, uh, which we're just completing uh, one and a half years later. And the outcome of that evolution journey is the operating model you just described. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's, what's important here is that this operating model is addressing what I shared before. So we, we wanted a stronger focus on what the business really needs and wants from us. Yeah, we, we in procurement often feel sort of, uh, I at least perceive it that way, we're almost doing procurement for procurement. Our, our default answer is, oh yeah, let's do an RFP or let's do some supplier management. Let, let's do some negotiation. Again, back to some of the businesses I serve, they're not so much interested in this. I, in the 15 years in consulting and the many clients I've supported, yes, the procurement functions were very interested in savings and spend and cash flow management and cash flow strategies. I, I have yet to meet really a business stakeholder who says, this is the greatest thing on the planet. I, I don't want to talk about anything else than country management. I, no one really cares so much. So I think we realize customer centricity, focusing on the business outcomes and the needs of the business is critical. We also realized that in order to meet the different outcomes I talked about, we need to have a much more flexible organization. And third, we realized if we want to actually deliver on many of the things that procurement has been promising for years, innovation and sustainability and value beyond savings, we actually need to invest in that stuff. We need to create capabilities and a team that focuses on this. So this is what you see here. Um, we have created three chapters where the capabilities um, and the, the people and the resources f find their home. So customer excellence, as you explained, is a dedicated function um, with folks who are, and that's a key difference also, folks who are aligned to how the corporate is structured. So procurement usually in the past has found its own weird way to structure itself in line with something that no one else cares about. Spend, cash fees, supply markets, suppliers, yeah. procurement processes. No one cares, yeah, except for procurement. 
but we, we claim we are serving the business. How can we if we're not structured in a way, if we don't work in that way? So that we've changed. Customer excellence is structured exactly how the business is. It mirrors the business and has dedicated folks who do nothing else than sort of being the eyes and ears of procurement, sitting with the business, understanding their strategies, but also selling procurement work. And they carry all of procurement targets. Yeah, very important. So they need to work with the business to be successful and they need to work with us, the rest of procurement, to be successful. Delivery is where we've consolidated everything that's core in procurement, sourcing, category management, other core procurement processes. And the key difference here, again, to address the outcomes that I shared, our commitment wheel, they are largely flexible. It's a big pool of people across many locations that basically get, get staff or assigned to work and then the third capability, our focus here on insights, because enablement is more traditional, analytics, risk management, that stuff. Insights is something new. And I call this category management 4.0 or 6.0 even, where this team, starting out small but growing over time, is focusing on the real problems, the real business issues. And rather than what procurement does usually, hey, let's run an RFP, so the sourcing response, we really try to understand the business problem and then create with the business, with the market, a solution for that problem. And then we even offer running that solution. So one quick example, again, linked back to the ambition of the company, Roche's growth strategy, double the medical impact for half the cost of society. The business came to us and said, but we need more lab space. We need more lab equipment. We need more lab people because we want to grow. We want to double. Yeah. And um, our response was, if we just invest and buy all that stuff, I don't think we're going to deliver on the second objective, which is half the cost of society. We need to do things differently. And that's where we invested. That was our pilot. Invest in solution creation, understand what are the options that we have. And then we started to work with external companies on lab robots, digitization of lab processes, outsourcing externalization of lab activities, building a whole operating model around the future of lab. And that was yeah. driven out of procurement with the business. Yeah, and that is a, is a solution to a business problem. Over time, I see more and more capacity moving from delivery into insights. Everything's underpinned, and I'll be done in a sec, by a performance portfolio and resource management function that manages the whole thing from pipeline, prioritization, ideation, resource management, assigning people to jobs, plus managing our performance very tightly. And overall, you can argue it's a bit of an operating model like a consulting firm runs. Mm. Um, and that's how we believe we can address and achieve our objectives that I outlined earlier and actually propel us into the future, not just doing what we've been doing in the past just faster, but actually step level change, do many things differently. Cool. Uh, that's a great uh, answer.